Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. So this morning, uh, I rolled over for what seemed like the hundredth time. And frustrated, I got up and I walked across the room to my phone. He glared at me. It's 5.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm waiting for the sun to rise. And it's hard to settle my mind. It's in these hours, these late hours of the night that I give up on sleep. It's in these late hours of the night that my mind replays conversations I've had during the day and unfairly scrutinizes them. They're always slanted towards the negative. Why is that? My shortcomings seem so much louder in the dark. So I decided to get up and prepare for my interview today. I started the coffee. And my special guest this morning is Mark Platt. And this is an important interview for me because Mark is a cherished friend and he's an extremely talented musician. So I'm deep in thought about what makes Mark uniquely Mark. Mark. As I sip my coffee and I decide to put on his new album. Mm -hmm. sins of the family to help me better understand him and i look over the liner notes of the album as the first song begins to play it's called when i feel alive and it slowly envelops and wakes my sleepy mind like sweet perfume <laughs> it's musical aromatherapy for the soul and for the next hour i just let the album play and I allow the music to inspire my early morning and my thoughts slowly unravel and the interview takes shape. And with the morning light and the music, my nighttime worries are gone and they seem silly now. Mark has created a beautiful album. There's a lot, of talk, uh, a lot to talk about here. So let me ask you, the listener, a question. When was the last time that you turned off the world and you just listened to a great album from start to finish? Do that with me now. I'm going to play you my favorite songs from the album, Sin of the, Fa Sins of the Family, and let's listen to them together. We will have company. We are joined by the artist, Mark Platt. Mark, this may be... Uh, my favorite new album. I think it's going to become your favorite new album too. Welcome, Mark, to the show. Jeremiah, I so appreciate those kind words and the fact that you really uh, resonate with the record. And I, I think that that is a, to me, that's like the highest honor that you can, you know, get as an artist. It's like that people actually get the messages that are in the music and you know we we live in a singles society and we live in a 24 7 you know 30 second soundbite society also and you know to to have that kind of praise about my record and i know you mean it because you've had it for a few months and you started listening to it right away and it resonated with you and you know us all being of a certain age you know we all have sins in our family and little secrets and things that we carry with us. And I'll get into that as we get through the interview, but there's things that have happened in my life that I felt that now at this age was time to get out. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about that because it is totally relatable. It's really, it's one of those that's hard to accomplish as an artist. I think as a great albums are out to me anyway, are, and, to you know listeners are albums that you take away uh, you forget that you're listening to an album and you start to think this song's about me <laughs> you know and uh, those, that's really hard to accomplish and you did that song after song and i want to talk about that i want to get deeper into that but first let's talk about um the title so intriguing what inspired that title well it, it, as I mentioned, I think that there's things that we carry with us. Um, that song, and there's a companion song on the record called The Secret. And for me, 
my one sin of my, you know, that I felt was when I was 12 and the last time I saw my mom and she was standing, you know, she went down the stairs to go to the hospital and, you know, for the last time, and I didn't want to go down and kiss her goodbye. And that's something that I've carried with me for 50 years. And, uh, you know, you know, from the outside, it would be easy to say, oh, dude, let it go. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in my case, it was something that I felt so, you know, that it really, you know, still touches me that I wasn't able to do that. Um, you know, and this is right after she said, take care of your brothers, <laughs> you know, and then, and then, you know, when you're 12, you're living in a different moment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a minute seems like a year, you know, when you're in your fifties or sixties or whatever, a minute seems like a second. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just a second ago that this happened, but it was 50 years ago plus for me. And why did you not, was it that you were just scared of the realization that you may be losing her and it, and you couldn't face that? It was just scary to you? Yes, I had to let my dog out. Um, yeah. the, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. My dad had told me nine months before my mom passed that she was going to and that I couldn't tell my brothers or anyone. And I had to hold that secret for a long nine months. And when you're 12 or 11 at the time, you know, like I said, it's every minute seems like an hour or a day or a week. And everything is, you know, when you're in a surreal situation, everything is in slow motion. And, you know, thinking about my 12 year old self, you know, or 11 year old self, you know, having to, you know, grow up fast. And, you know, I had two younger brothers. One, one was two years younger and then John was six years younger. So, you know, that's a lot of stuff. And, you know, I think all families have something like this. And I think this is why this record will resonate with people because, you know, you carry these abandonment issues into relationships. There's some songs about that on this record. And then you carry the you know, the burdens of, you know, decisions you make and how that affects your life. And it, it starts at a young age, at a foundational age. And I really think that that's what this record's to me about. It's about, you know, carrying these things for decades and how it affects what you do as a professional and how you, as, as a partner, as a possible parent or whatever, you know, is going to happen in your life. Um, these things are set early in stone. The question is, how do you break the stone open and, mm -hmm. you know, move on with your life? And and when do you say, I've relied on that. I've, I've used that as an excuse for many things to explain how I've either treated people or how I've gone through life. And when mm -hmm. do you say, it's now on me, you know, I'm too old to do that any longer. And let me, I better look at that. You know what I've um, noticed, Jeremiah, that the mirror is a big thing for me. I, I use it as a metaphor in a lot of songs. Like it's hard to look in the mirror. Uh, the song young again, it's just like, you know, sometimes the world looks so promising, even at whatever age you're at, that it doesn't matter that you're looking at the year in the mirror and you see a few lines that you didn't see before or you know, not in my case, but in a lot of people's case, their hair recedes and, and, and just whatever, you know, you're not 25 anymore or 35, whatever it is. But what's important is to be able to look in the mirror every day before you go to bed or when you wake up and say, you know what, I did good today, or I'm going to do good tomorrow. And, you know, that's a big thing for me, you know, gratitude and being able to like really carry your life forward in a positive way so that it affects people. I try to do it in my business, you know, my radio promotion business. I try to do it, you know, in my family dealings and my friend dealings or whatever it is. And it's just like, you know, once you hit a certain age, you know, you don't get too many do-overs. You know what I mean? You're either a yeah. good guy or a jerk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, well, those that know you, um, I was telling you, Mark, I, I'm going to just compliment you for a second here, but those that know you know that what a great guy you are. You you really promote 
music artists and those that are, uh, you know, your business dealings, you really help people out a lot. So don't ever have those doubts that you're a bad okay, guy. Go to you. bed, go think it. I'm a good guy. You know, your story about your mom made me think about when my dad passed and, um, I've never shared this story with anybody, not even my family, but we were all at the hospital and it was his last day and uh, it was a long day. And so I took a break and I left and he said to me, the only, his last words to me were, I don't think I'm going to make it out of this one. Those are his last words to me. And I, and mm. I, yeah, you are. Yeah, you're dead. And I left, but I couldn't stay because I, it was too hard for me to see him in that position. And um, you know, that weighs on me too. So I relate to, to that, to your, your pain. I'm, I'm, I hope you've gotten past it. And um, yeah, you know, it's interesting what you say there, because what you just said strikes something with me, like, you know, sending your, your parent off into the next world isn't too dissimilar to your parents sending you off to camp when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Mm -hmm. just, it's just the roles get reversed and, you know, one last thing I want to say about sins of the family. And it, I don't mention this in my song, but my dad and my grandparents made a decision that my brothers and I were not going to go to our mom's funeral. That's a sin in the family. That's a sin mm-hmm. of the family. And I just believe that everybody has those kinds of yes. things. And it's yes. not, this is not just, For me, you know what I mean? I and Mm -hmm. that's what I the message I want to get across is like, you know, deal, you know, even if you've suppressed it for decades or whatever, for me, my therapy and my spiritual life has to do with music and and writing these songs and letting it out. And like people will, you know, I, I go to this guitar merchant open mic every week, right? It's my one night. I take that night off Thursday nights and I go to the guitar merchant. So I can do my therapy. I can, I can let these songs out because I don't play like a lot of shows. You know what I mean? I'm going to play one in April for my birthday, April 13th, the guitar merchant. And uh, it's important to have an outlet and for people to be able to resonate with a message that's not coming through someone just talking to you, but someone speaking to you through music. Right. Because it becomes this personal relationship that's what I was saying earlier about when, when it's that good, when the writing's that good and the, the music is that good and then it connects with you, it becomes this per, it becomes yours. It's not Mark Platt's anymore. It's not the world's it's right. Jeremiah's. I just, I took this song and it's about me and it helps me deal with the feelings that, that I'm dealing, that I'm going through, that I've just connected with in, through you, through your music. That's just, that such an amazing thing about music, right? Oh, oh also and, the thing you said at the beginning of the show about uh, waiting for the sun to rise. Let's talk about that one for a sec. I, I know that sometimes I would lay there with my partner next to me and I'm awake and she's asleep. Mm-hmm. And I want to express to her how I feel, you know what I mean, about her or us or our dog or whatever in the moment but you're just sitting there or i'm just sitting there staring at the ceiling you know going over whatever's going on and that's the time you're talking about and i get up every day at 5 30 to do start work doing my job and it's i know dark. i texted you today and you were there <laughs> yeah it's dark and it's brutal getting up at uh-huh. 5 30 it's brutal especially with daylight savings time just it's brutal but you know what there's a purpose You know what I mean? You have a purpose. You're putting your show together. I'm putting my day together for, you know, all my clients for Radio Candy and all that stuff. And I get up with a renewed, you know, I'm going to go out and help my artists today. I'm going to go out and help my music community today. You know, and that makes me feel really good about, you know, getting up at 530. It's important. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm glad that you brought that up. I, I, that I was, I actually placed, there were two titles of your songs in my opening intro, and I'm sure you recognize them, but uh, as the listener goes along and we play the music, they'll recognize them. One was, you know, I'm waiting for the sun to rise. That's your title. And then the second one was, it's hard to settle my mind, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I, I dropped both of those in there with, uh, I, I did make a note on 
I'm waiting for the sun to rise. I wanted to ask you about one of the, the lines in the song. Um, it's, I want to make sure I quote it right. So give me one second to find it. Yeah, it says, no more. One of the lines is, I love that line about I'm laying next to you. You know, I could just picture that you're waiting for your lover to awake. Uh, but you say, no more compromise. I'm waiting for the sun to rise and no more compromise, which I thought was such a powerful statement because it's almost uh, the way I took it was that sometimes you need to, to to feel that way to be fully truthful to the person that you love so that they get the real authentic person and can really decide how they love that person right you, sometimes there's no compromise on your side you, Same you for know, them. let me get I'll give you a simple thing so yesterday um just this is life and I love these little anecdotes about life like um, my girlfriend, Karen was like, can you drop this letter in the mailbox? And it has to go out, before, you know, by five. And I said, well, the mailbox down the street, when you're walking Bodie, our dog does that. And she goes, no, it doesn't. It's, it's like noon. And like, I went to, off to guitar merchant and she sends me a text with a picture of Bodie standing at the mailbox. She goes, you were right. They pick it up at five. And oh, she goes, I'm happy. She told you, <laughs> you were right. And, yeah. And it's like, I would have just seen it and said, I'm not telling her. <laughs> that them. makes that makes me feel good that she was willing to say like you were right and like yeah you don't, that's good you don't, have, you don't have women doing that all the time you know no, that's good that's what i was saying <laughs> Difficult but, but, but that is the you know there is compromise in everything but sometimes what i'm saying in that song to me was i don't have to compromise that i really care about this person and that i'm unabashedly cool with that and, you know, maybe in my life before this, I've had to compromise or not compromise and it costs me in relationships. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's, you know, what I felt that that meant. But to you, it felt a little different, which I think is great, you know, and I think everybody should have that, you know, be able to find that gray line, that gray area of what compromise means. The new album by Mark Platt is Sins of the Family. We're talking about it. We're listening to it together today. Um, the title to me is so deeply intriguing. It could be mean so many things to to depending on where you're at in your life. I expected Mark through the album before I'd listened to tell this maybe a troubled story of his past. Um, I wasn't sure what it referred to. But as you listen to the album, it's much, much deeper. Uh, and it as it unravels, as you listen to it, you're about to listen to one of the songs right now that we've been talking about, Waiting for the Sun to Rise. Um, it's, it became a much more complex storytelling of the important moments and choices in life and how we manifest those relationships and those experiences that shape us. And the songs, once you go to band camp and buy that's I think where Mark would make the most money would go to Mark, uh, go to get the album on band camp, but you can hear it streaming anywhere. And this, uh, the songs are arranged like feelings. They go up and down. So there's happy moments, there's reflective moments, there's sad moments, there are reflections on the past and the mistakes and then correcting those. And, and uh, it's just a really really great album uh we're gonna take you to break right now and we'll be right back so don't go anywhere but enjoy a moment alone with the music waiting for the sun to rise is the song that we're gonna play right now and before i let you go mark mentioned he's got a birthday coming up mark's new record is called sins of the family our featured song is the one that got away mark has got a big birthday bash with special guests the ghost writers on saturday April Jeff 13th. Scott, by the way, Jeff Scott of the Ghost Riders. Jeff Scott of the Ghost Riders. Yeah, good, good guy, good songwriter, good musician. Saturday night, April 13th, it starts at 7.30. All ages welcome, $10. It's at the Guitar Merchant, which uh, is Mark's happy getaway on Thursday nights. So don't go bug him. 22807 Satakoy Street, West Hills, California. It's in the Valley. You can go to Mark Platt dot bandcap.com and search album 
sins of the family. M A R C P L A T T at dot bandcamp dot com. The album The Sins of the Family. Go now. And you can check out the one that got away. It's our featured song. It, uh, the YouTube video is great. Go to YouTube and uh, just search the one that got away, Mark Platt. We will be right back. And again, here is Waiting for the Sun to Rise. <laughs> 